Okay, so hi. Um, I'm going to jump into our photo essay that for AP Lang. Um, this is a really great assignment for you to be able to conceptualize universal ideas attached to a topic or an issue, and then to be able to what I call like unwrap or unpack um, text. In this case, it's not written text. It is visual text. It's a photograph. But to be able to unpack it um, using your universal idea. And so what's so awesome is that a universal idea, first of all, it sounds basic, but it's an idea. And that means that it's yours alone, right? So that if I'm writing this essay, or Gina and Esteban are writing this essay, and we're all choosing, we happen to choose the same topic of voter suppression or voting rights, we're not all going to have the same universal ideas, right? That's why that's what makes writing so interesting. I might assign one essay topic to everybody, but I shouldn't expect the same thing being said and written about in each paragraph. And as we get older, meaning IE, like high school, juniors, seniors, and college and beyond at your job, wherever you will be in your career when you write something, or have to sell something, or have to... Um, you know, use a story to get what you want, right? These are all the same skills. That is, how do you convince people on an idea-based level? Because that's how our brain works. We're connected to ideas. We're connected to stories. Having said all of that, um, I do want to pause and just take a moment because this is my second take of this video and I'm not feeling very video um, friendly right now. Um, it's my weekend. And so just, it's what I promised myself and I'm going to stick to it. And I have to say this, that whatever I film in the next five minutes, six minutes is what I'm going with. So I apologize. I will try to like get into the zone. Okay. So your first goal is to choose a topic or an issue. This should be something that you have some interest in or some curiosity with. This is not going to be a research assignment. Um, it's just kind of getting you a little bit interested and a little bit excited about thinking about what's going on in our world today. So there are a billion different topics. Choose one that you want to learn more about or you think you know and you want to share. Um, you don't have to be an expert on a topic to do this assignment. Um, you could just take 10, five minutes and do a quick Google search to kind of um, get into the topic a little bit more, get some more ideas. Um, you could watch a quick video or YouTube video on it. You could, um, you know, listen to a podcast on it. It doesn't matter. Um, honestly, I chose racial wealth gap because I really am interested in researching this, um, this topic. I had designed a unit on, on racial wealth gap for AP a couple of years ago and then never used it. Um, and so that's always on my mind. So I did, when I did this assignment the other night, I did Google it because it had been a couple of years and I just, I don't know, I, I wanted to make sure in my head that I, the images that I found were related to it and I wanted the right words for it, the right universal idea words. So you might want to go in and um, either watch a quick um, video, watch a little clip, um, read, uh, you know, read a little bit about it. Click on images, click on news, click on videos here up at the top. I would just toggle between the three. Again, this is not a research assignment. I want to be clear. So don't go into the weeds. I'm like, oh my God, I need to know about this topic before I can write about it. I don't want you, you have to like let go of that. I just want you to come to the table basically with what you know about the topic right now, plus maybe like five, 10 minutes more of light searching. Your next goal is to, after you've considered the topic, done a little bit of light searching, um, think of three different universal ideas that you believe um, represent your topic. And again, this is where it's different for everyone, right? Um, I would go to the big list of universal ideas, which um, it's like playing Russian roulette, but it's one of these tabs up here. Uh, So let's see, if I am looking at racial wealth gap, you know, it is about, um, it is about society, right? I could go with society, but to be honest with you, that's not the most provocative or interesting universal idea. So your job is to really find three universal ideas that were like, oh, wow, that sounds heavy. That sounds 
um, big. That sounds really interesting and like you can do a lot with. I chose disenfranchisement, oppression, patriarchy. That wasn't even on the our list, um, but I added it um, because I think it's very provocative. It's saying something about, um, you know, the, the, the one in power, right? Usually the, the white male or the male dominant is um, the patriarch, right? Or the, the man in power. But in this case, it is the power is, um, is, uh, is the United States. And so um, I, I then thought, okay, disenfranchisement. If I go to a Google search for disenfranchisement, and I'm slowly typing this, and I go to images, because this is the word I chose, right? I'm getting a lot of voter suppression, voting rights images coming up with the word disenfranchisement. That is because right now in our rhetoric, in our shared language, the word disenfranchisement is attached to voting rights and voter suppression. And that's the amazing thing about rhetoric, but it isn't always, right? So right now, this is what's coming up. You also see all these, you know, other different things we might be looking for. Um, so that didn't work for me. For some of you, your universal idea that you choose might turn up images that um, deal directly with your topic. It's, you know, probably not though. So probably what you're going to have to do is think about, okay, um, what are some uh, ways I can describe my topic? What are some different words I can use? Um, to do some image searches, right? Because I can't just throw in disenfranchisement. It's not coming up with the racial wealth gap. But if I put this, right, then I get only graphs. So it's like, okay, I'm not using this. I'm not using the graphs. But be patient if you go scroll down a little bit. Um, I'm still not really finding anything that really sticks out to me that I want to use for racial wealth gap. Um, so, you know, maybe this one, but it's not really provocative. So what, sometimes you're going to have to rely on like what you have in your head, right? So if I have images of a broken um, community, like the real estate isn't, you know, it's just like I'm thinking, I was thinking of Chicago where I'm from or Baltimore um, where whole city blocks are boarded up you know, or, or, or a good amount. And so for me, that really does speak to the racial wealth gap. Um, so, you know, I could just look for that um, boarded up homes in Chicago and get the image that I want. I don't want to spend too much time on the image part of this assignment, but it is important, right? And it does force your brain to piece out what are the different ways that our brain can make sense, our brains make sense of choosing images, pairing images with abstract concepts. It's hard to think abstractly, um, especially if you're not used to it um, or it's been a while, right? Um, so the whole point about writing, right? Good writing is good ideas and good ideas are abstract. Um, so I did land on this image somewhere and it did um, match the image that I had in my head for my own um, research or personal knowledge of the topic. Um, but I do give you a disclaimer up at the top, which is that a Google search on its own, just with your universal idea, might not produce the image that you want or the image that kind of matches it, right? So like when I put in um, disenfranchisement, it came up with voter suppression, voting rights. It didn't come up with the racial wealth gap because I thought of disenfranchisement for the racial wealth gap, right? Maybe, maybe it's not front and center on Google. So that's great, right? That's a good sign. So you would just have to search a little bit more for what disenfranchisement um, means to you or means to me. And it was being broken apart from the mainstream, from majority, um, forced apart. Um, and so for me, abstractly, right, this is, this is how I'm conceiving that um, word disenfranchisement. There's no right or wrong with choosing an image, but I do want you to feel a little bit of discomfort or frustration maybe at being like, okay, which image do I choose and which universal idea and how does it relate? That's all part of this assignment and you'll work through it. Um, I then have up here these very distinct 
questions, okay? What, why, how, and so what? Okay, well, what, what, why, how, what, and so what? So um, what is the picture? And describe it as if we were blind, like as if nobody else could see it. And it's going to sound really basic, but here, here's one, two, three, four, five, you know, five or six homes pressed tightly together in row houses, very tall windows, short front stoops, boarded up, um, broken glass, no one's on the street, right? So you're very literal, very detailed about what you see as if no one can see it, but you, and you want people to really see what you see. And then why did I select this particular universal idea, okay, and these images? This is really about like, okay, this is the fun part. Why did I select this image? Why disenfranchisement? There's obviously something working in my head that connects the two together, and I'm going to show you. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to explain it to you. I said, um, first of all, for the what, the image depicts. So the word depicts is to show. So that's a great phrase to use. Take the phrase. Steal the phrase. Use the phrase. Um, as much as you can steal things, um, when I say steal them, steal them because I want you to be using these stems until the stems become completely natural to you. We often don't speak with the word depicts. Start using it in your writing in this class, but it shows, it depicts a black man walking down a street alone without a single person or a single car, just himself. Okay, so I'm really getting specific, but then I'm getting kind of creative too, right? I'm using words like stacked closely together. So I'm really, I'm starting to tell a story. Right, so feel creative, tell the story of your picture. Um, the row houses are older and seem to be, okay, seems to be is something that you might wanna repeat here. Um, seems to be as if. So you are telling the story of this picture. So this one's interesting. Why did I select this particular universal idea, right? In these images, start with this image represents my universal idea, but I didn't say that, it just says, I just say, this image represents disenfranchisement because that sounds more expert than saying, this image represents my universal idea of disenfranchisement. Just say, hey, it represents disenfranchisement. I'm going to make that claim and be strong with it. And I use this phrase, in the way that, in the way that, which is a great way to say, um, you know, it's a great way to say because, really, but it's a different way to say because, right? It leads the reader into what I'm thinking. Now, I'm going to pick up on my universal idea, okay, and I'm going to describe it through this picture. So I have disenfranchisement, distanced, set apart, alone, abandoned. All of those words could be used for disenfranchisement in a complete completely different realm, a completely different context. But those words are also used for it, talking about this man on the street. So I'm using words that one might use talking about disenfranchisement in any, any scenario. I'm just using them again here, right? So I'm distanced. Um, you could even look up synonyms for your universal idea. And you can use those synonyms to help you to describe the image that you chose. I mean, that's a great strategy because it's getting you to slice apart your universal idea into different, um, into different words, right? It's different parts, if that makes sense. And then I say this phrase, disenfranchisement is about. I sound like an expert. I sound like I've studied disenfranchisement for years. Haven't. So... You sound like an expert too when you just come out and say what you say and make a claim. So this, whatever universal idea is about, forced separateness. So I'm making sense of it on my own because I picture people being pushed out of their neighborhoods, people being, um, you know, left without a scent, having, um, you know, given their lifeblood and family for, you know, so I'm picturing this and I'm drawing it out for people. Um, and I describe it. Once you are a part of something, the part of the ownership class, the next minute you are disowned. I mean, I'm just riffing off of what I think disenfranchisement means in terms of um, money, racial wealth gap, and inequity, um, and systemic racism. And that's what I'm doing here. Um, it's almost like if you were just writing in a journal, but I, in my head, while I'm writing, I'm connecting the picture, the image, 
the universal idea and all the kind of words that kind of fall into that to make sense of that universal idea and the topic. Um, and the whole time you have the three in your head like that, right? The way that it's stacked right here. Image, universal idea, topic. And they all flow up, right? And down. So um, I make a connection, um, you know, I'm, I'm making sense of it. Then I say similar to this man's neighborhood, right? I'm making a connection between this man's neighborhood, what I see, what I notice, and the topic of racial wealth gap through the lens of disenfranchisement, through the scope and the view. Um, I say this picture proves that disenfranchisement is related to the racial wealth gap because one, two, three, right? Um, and, and then I stopped. I, I didn't fill out anymore because I really felt like having, I just wrote for like, you know, eight, 10 minutes. And then having looked at the questions that follow, I'm like, okay, I got to these questions. That's fine. I don't care how you write this as long as you've answered the questions, to be honest with you. It doesn't have to be here. It could be in a paragraph. Um, obviously, I didn't write it into these little boxes, but do you and, and how are you sure that you've answered these questions? So this one, how does each image tell the story of this universal idea? Oh, Argina said um, it's only one image. I thought I was going to do two, but I just decided on one. So how does this image? I feel like I've answered that up above. Um, what is a specific relationship between the images? Actually, this one. Thank you, Argina. I'm taking that out because nope. Um, that was when I was doing two, two of the um, images. But this one is crucial. So please, so the how is crucial. How does this image tell the story, right, of the universal idea and the topic? You have to have answered that. I feel like I have. And then, so what? What is the overall impact of, these, of this image combined with the universal idea as a way to tell um, the story of this issue. I feel like I've gotten to that too, right? The so what um, is the loss of continual generations, just like this man in this picture, his neighborhood, um, he is separate from his neighborhood. His, his neighborhood is separate from other neighborhoods um, to the point where they don't even exist. The neighborhoods any longer exist. And he is alone, left alone without anything to show in his neighborhood. Um, and I feel that that also represents disenfranchisement, which represents the racial wealth gap. I hope this makes sense. Crucial though, the so what question, that's the impact question, right? That's the final, why should we care? What's the impact? What is the, the end game here? Um, so the so what, the how, um, the why and the what are the ones for you. Um, please, please, I will send out an, a message on Google Classroom that we've gotten rid of the two image um, expectation, um, but let me know if you have any questions. Still trying to make a video under 20 minutes, and my goal is to do that soon.